Hey everybody, I've got Don on the line. Don lives in Southeast Texas and he's got some encounters he wants to talk about. I'm kind of coming in this cold and I don't really know what they are. So we're all going to find out together about these events. So Don, how's everything going, buddy? Yeah, I'm I'm great. It's just hot down here in Texas right now. Is it? <laughs> Actually, we've had a, like 85 degree temperatures for a week. It's kind of, cr- and the humidity hasn't been that bad, but... But man, I know exactly what you're talking about. Hey, tell us a little bit about where you live and the environment and the geography and all of where you grew up. Well, well, I live in uh, in Orange County, Texas. It's a it's right on the border of Louisiana. It's very piney and marsh swamp area. It's got a lot of pine woods, oak. I mean, it's 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 pretty it's pretty rough once you get off you know the beaten path of of certain areas. Some pretty rough terrain out here. Especially with the swamp lands, you know, you got all those critters running around out there. Yeah. Are you? Have you had like a long series of events, or you want to just start at the beginning and just kind of walk us through? Yeah, there's a couple strange happenings, especially out in the, well, out in the oil field where I live. The first one, uh, and I, I have some from me and my dad, my brother telling me stuff. I mean, if you want me to talk about that, I can. You share with us what you're willing to share, and we're man, we're all sitting at the table here, listening with our ears perked up and ready to go. So you just, yeah. you, it's the floor is yours. All right. The first one I'll talk about is when I seen this thing. I was a a, a pretty avid rabbit hunter when I was young. I was I was I think I was about twelve or thirteen when I seen this thing out in the oil field. There's different sections of woods, and they were all divided from from the old dirt roads that went through the oil field. So you'd have very large patches of pine wood, you know, wood lines and stuff around. Right behind our house where we lived, there was a patch of wood that usually every time I went out rabbit hunting, I, I could at least kill three rabbits right there. And it was a smaller, it was a smaller patch of wood. I had a bunch of tallow trees and stuff in there. Well, that night I decided, you know, I got my, my break barrel 410. And I, I took off, you know, from the house, told my dad, hey, I'm going hunting. I'll be back in a little bit. Well, that hunting trip turned real short. So I, I got all my stuff ready and went out, and I went to that little patch of wood. Well, the patch of wood was by where our old chicken coop was. We didn't have chickens at this time, but I was just kind of walking along there, and I think I might have caught the drop on this thing or something because he, he didn't. I, it was almost like he didn't notice I was there at first, and I wasn't really paying attention at first. And I, I cracked that, I cracked that old four ten closed, and I, you know, I had a good feeling. I was like, oh, I usually I always kill rabbits right here. When I cracked that barrel closed, I looked up. I had a headlamp on. I looked up and I seen this thing, and it, it scared me. Like, I don't understand. I, I'm getting nervous even talking about this. And he was standing there, and it was like he was picking, you know, those little balls that grow on a tallow tree, like those little green, uh, I, don't, I don't know, bulbs or something. I, I'm not really familiar with them, but like a gumball. Yeah, so it, it's it's a it's a we have tiny tallows down here. They're, they're, they grow these little like some kind of little green ball on them, and this thing was picking them up here. And when I seen this thing. It wasn't like I would have pictured a Bigfoot to look like. It was, it was about seven or eight foot tall, and it was solid black. The hair on it was black. And and it wasn't real long and shaggy either. I don't almost know how to explain it. It was just like and he was massive, like he was, he was very muscular. And all this will make sense later on into the story, but when I see this thing, I froze. I mean, you know, I mean, I think pretty much anyone would just kind of freeze if they seen one of these. But Of course, yeah. And and some in my head, you know, was telling me, don't shoot at it. Because, I mean, all I had was a 410. He'd probably just piss him off and he'd come beat me to death or something. Anyway, so me and this thing are staring at each other. And it, it, it lasted for about 30 seconds. And I kind of shined it up a little more towards his head and he, he, he kind of squinted his eyes at me. And he kind of grunted at me. He just kind of gave me one of those, just them low, you know, 
Like I can't, I can't mimic the sound he made, but he kind of gave me a, a little grunt. He kind of turned away from me and walked into this patch of woods. Well, after he turned his back and walked into this woods, I sprung out of my, you know, frightened stage, and I ran around because, the, the, like I said, though, that little patch of woods wasn't very big. It would be easy to run around and see him come out on the other side. So I did that. I ran around there, and nothing came out. Well, in the, in those woods, there was this old pipe rack with old drill pipe sitting on it. And I, it was probably like 30 foot long. And, you know, in my head, I'm like, that thing had to go under there. That thing had to duck off under this pipe rack or something. I, I just kind of gave up looking for it. And I went back to the house and I told my dad, you know, and I'm scared shitless at this point. You know, I don't know what I just seen. You know, I, I, I'm trying to explain to my dad, you know, what I just seen. And I, I to this day, I really can't ex- explain to you what that thing was. You know, I want to say it was a Bigfoot. I don't know. And he just, he kind of just didn't believe me. He was just kind of like, oh, son, you're. Yeah, you just seeing things, your imagination, you know. Of course, my dad, him being an old roughneck out in the oil field, he's not really scared of much. That's that's pretty much that encounter right there. Now, uh, let, let me ask you a couple of questions about it. So you say it was about seven to eight feet tall. It had black hair. Can you kind of describe the face? Because you, you could see its eyes squint when you shine the light in its eyes. Yeah, it, 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 I want to say it kind of looked like a gorilla a little bit like a gorilla you know how his, his, his their heads are kind of dome shaped like they have a like a cone head almost his head was like that but it wasn't as coney as a gorilla it was kind of it was more like a human like if somebody had like a, a gorilla human shaped head right you know he didn't have, he didn't really have a nose and his eyes were pretty large of course and when he when he grunted, I, I kind of seen his teeth, and his his teeth kind of look like gorilla teeth, also with those humongous canines and stuff in there. It did have sharp looking like predator teeth. Oh yeah, it definitely had teeth in it. And, and when I when I mentioned this, I, I don't talk about this to many people. And when I did mention it to somebody, one of my friends, they're like, "Oh, you seen a dog, man?" I was like, "No, no, 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 that's not what this thing was." Uh, it, it didn't have a snout or nothing like that. And this thing had to be at least six foot across the shoulder. I mean, this thing was humongous. The way I could explain it was he looked like a ginormous bodybuilder. That's the way his, his body type was. He wasn't like the the one that, you know, everybody sees on that video. The uh, What is that, the Patterson film or something? Yeah, no, that, that, the ones down here don't look like that. They're They're extremely muscular. This thing looked like a hairy Hulk walking around. That's unreal. Uh, c- could you see through its hair? I mean, you st- was its face covered with hair? Could you get a color of the skin? Was it black or kind of charcoal color? It, it, I think his skin was it, okay. So, so his his hair was like a little bit longer than like you would see like a pit bull's hair because a pit bull's hair is like is like very close to the skin. I couldn't really make out. I'm sure. I think his skin was probably dark because the skin on his face was dark, like a maybe a dark, dark charcoal color. And, and and the weird part about it, when he turned away from me to walk, I didn't hear him walk. I mean, something that big, you would think you would hear him, you know, like snapping limbs and stuff, and, you know, moving around in there. I didn't even hear him, and that's what surprised me. I don't really know what I would have done when I ran around the woods to see if he came out. I don't, I don't know what I would have done to him, but or what he would have done to me. But I was just like when I when I made eye contact with him, that is the worst fear I've ever felt. The biggest fear I've ever felt in my entire life was was that moment. Yeah, I believe you. Now you you saw this thing and you you backed out and you ran. It must have been a real small patch of woods. Yeah, it was. I'd say it was probably about. 30 yards long, long by maybe 20 yards wide. It wasn't that big. It wasn't that big at all. Yeah, I, I know. I used to squirrel hunt in little patches like that. So I'm, and they're full of wildlife because it's like the, Oh yeah. You know, for a hundred yards or so, it's the only environment where they can stay concealed. So I understand. 
and you ran around it didn't come out and you, did you come back through the woods right there at the edge of the woods is where i'd usually see them rabbits because they had they had uh, like a little bit into the woods there was this pipe rack and like you could clearly see the pipe rack through the woods right like it wasn't real thick thick woods it was a bunch of tallow trees and it was, it was pine trees there and it had a pretty thick underbrush too like in those patches of woods we have down here, we got really thick under underbrush, you know. Yeah. I, I felt like I should have seen him under there, but I didn't see him. He just, it's kind of like he just vanished after, you know, after he turned around and walked into the woods. That was the last time I seen him. Yeah. I was going to ask if you had been back or went through there again and figured out maybe where he could have escaped. But I mean, if it's 20 or 30, yards square you know a deer can skirt out places you never see them leap and 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 then they could run 300 yards across the field you're on the other side of the trees you never see them and you know my my brother was telling me my brother recently got into the to the research of bigfoot he lives up in uh up near texarkana and he had he, he actually had one scream at him which, if that thing would have screamed at me, I would have probably crapped all over myself. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. I, I'm just like, you know, after these things are over, and I don't know how you are about it, and I know it terrified you, as a, especially as a 12-year-old. But like the way you describe it, it's, um, you know, it becomes, I think over time, it becomes comical while it's still very serious to you. Because these things scare people to death. I mean, they scare people to death, and... I don't know. I don't know how you deal with it through all the years. How have you dealt with it? Have you had nightmares, or do you have a problem going back in the woods? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, after after the fact of, of seeing it, I still hunted, but I, I felt like something was kind of watching me. You know, if if that makes sense. But the way I've dealt with it is, I just kind of I'm I'm a see it to believe it type type person. You know. You can tell me this exists all day, but if I don't lay my eyes on it, I mean, you know, I'm kind of like a a realism type guy. I got to see this thing to believe it. Well, I kind of, I mean, for a while, I didn't go hunting at all. You know, from like 12 to maybe 14, I was like, I'm not having this. I'm not having this. I will literally shit all over myself if I see this thing again. I'm not dealing with it, you know. And now I just kind of, well, but even then, I just kind of accepted that that thing was out there. And I'm guessing it's always in the back of your mind, though. Your 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 head's on a swivel quite a bit, I'm sure. Oh yeah, I, I deer and hog hunt now, and I definitely keep my eyeball cast onto that wood line. Yeah, it's it's because I don't want one. You know, like I said, how I kind of I feel like I got the drop on him because like I feel like he wasn't really paying attention when I walked up. Right. I don't want one to do that to me. Uh, the things I heard about about these creatures is that they don't like guns too well and i'm always carrying i i i, I hog hunt with a 6.5 creed more and if that can't if, if he comes at me and i can't drop him with that i'm pretty much just done at that point yeah some people say they're impervious to bullets i don't think they are well i think they're some type of animal i think they're actually some type of just massive animal i i, I don't know how to explain it i think the reason that it scared me so bad is pretty much the fear of the unknown i didn't know what that thing was all right so that was at 12 years old bring us forward from that tell us some other things that you've had go on are you still are you still living on the same place or have you moved? Uh, no no sir um my my dad had retired from the oil field uh when i i think i was about 16 or 17 he retired and we we had to eventually move off the oil field property but up until that time, I mean, we all, we, ever since I was a little kid, we've seen weird stuff out there. I mean, it's, it's an old land, you know, nobody, we didn't live around nobody. I mean, we didn't have no neighbors whatsoever. I mean, it was just us out there in the oil field, middle of the oil field. That was it. That was just us. My brother, we ended up buying him a, a tree stand. And there's a, there's a certain patch of woods, which I'll get to all this in a minute. You know, this is, this is us talking about it now. Now that I've, I've done research on these things and everything, there's a lot more of them out there than I thought there was. I'll yeah. just put it that way. You just tell this the way you want to tell it, buddy. You just, just do it any okay. way you want to. Okay. 
So we ended up fast forward about about two years, or about, about a year and a half. I was about 13, probably fixing to turn 14. We bought my brother a deer stand. So we went and set it up in this in this patch of woods over by, by Cow Bayou. It, like there was this big stretch of woods, and then on the other side was Cow Bayou. And there was a marsh between it separating the woods from the bayou, right? Well, we go in, and there's a, I'm going to mention this too. There's this old car. There's this old car in the woods out there, old Volkswagen, I believe it is. This old beat up car sitting out in the woods. Anyway, my brother puts up this deer stand. He he goes. He says, "I'm going to go hunt this deer stand one day." So he goes out there and he hunts in the deer stand, and he comes home. And I don't know what made me ask him this. I was like, "Hey, man, did you feel weird out there?" He's like, "Yeah, you know what? I did kind of feel weird. I, I feel like something kept watching me out there." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's that's weird." I said, I, I feel that way, too, especially from this part of the woods. This part of the woods, I, me and my dad didn't even like walking in it for some reason. And like I said, my dad was a, a hardcore man. He said, he, my, like my dad said, he always felt like something was, was watching him in there. Well, a, a few weeks later, my brother says, hey, I'm going to go hunt out my stand. I said, okay. He told my dad, and he went out, and then he, he come back like 20 minutes later. And we're like, hey, what, what, what's going on? You know, are you all right? Well, apparently, his door, his deer stand has been ripped off of the tree and mangled. And I was like, uh, and he was asking me if I did that. I'm like, hey, how would I rip a freaking 100-pound deer stand off a tree at 13 years old and rip it all apart? We still, to this day, can't explain that. I mean, that somebody, it, it looks like somebody went out there with a sledgehammer ripped this thing off the tree and beat it to smithereens. I mean, there was pieces of deer stand laying everywhere. Was it a ladder stand with a ladder up to it and everything? Yeah, it, it went up and it had like a, 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 a kind of a frame that mounted onto the tree. Yeah. Like the ladder was, we didn't even find the ladder. I mean, it was, it was gone and the seat part and the mount for the tree was just ripped all apart. If we fast forward to, to now, we ended up doing some research on it, and he used to pee over there in that area. Turns out if you pee on a Bigfoot's property, he's, it's going to piss him off a little bit, apparently. I guess he went up there and was like, oh, so you're going to you know, piss on my territory. I'm going to come rip your deer stand out of the tree. When I was around the same age as, as 14 or 13 or 14, I used to find these weird tree structure things, like thick structures in the woods. and you know, It didn't really make sense to me seeing that either. And I was like, oh, wow, you know, that's kind of creepy. You know, I always thought somebody might have been walking around in the woods or something. I don't know how they would have got out there because that where we live, there was a gate right in front of our house going back into the oil field. So you couldn't just drive out there. There was no way for people to get out there without us knowing about it. I'll talk about one more experience. And this thing, this, this was actually me and my dad that seemed so. He finally understood that I was, I was not some nut ball okay like i wasn't crazy at this point so from 12 years old you're you're about to become vindicated right yeah me and my dad my dad ended up buying a golf cart so we were we ended up going riding around the oil field and we were in the very far back of the field and it ain't nothing out there i mean there's a flat marsh trees that's it that is literally everything out there and it's one dirt road that goes through it we were riding along there, and I'd say it was in the summer, so it was right before it was getting dark. So about seven, about seven thirty, eight o'clock, where the sun was pretty low in the sky. Here comes something out of the woods. My dad really wasn't paying attention at first, so I had to get his attention to see this thing. So this massive dog comes out of the woods, a hairless dog. I don't like I said, I don't know what this thing was, but this was the biggest dog I've ever seen, and my dad was fixing to have a stroke seeing this thing because he finally believed me that there was something going on out there that we didn't know about. It just came out of the woods. It stopped in the road, and we stopped the golf cart, and we're looking at this thing. And this dog, I'm about I'm about six foot tall. If I was standing next to this dog right now, his head would probably be in the center of my stomach. I mean, this was a big dog and did not have any hair on it. It looked like one of them cats, like one of them hairless cats. Like, that's what his skin looked like, except it was like a, a light 
charcoal gray color. You know, my dad, he's like, what is that? What is that? I was like, I don't, I don't know. I've never seen that before. So we kind of ease up, you know, like trying to go towards it and it goes into the woods and we drove up and I mean, there was no sign of this thing ever even crossing the road or going into the woods. I mean, it looked like, you, ever, you know what a dire wolf is? Yeah. Like a massive wolf. It was like one of those just with no hair. I was going to say, uh, you know, the coyotes get the mange and stuff, but it sounds like it's way bigger than a coyote. Oh, this thing was this thing was humongous. I don't I, – I shot coyotes out there quite a bit. Oh, uh, back, backtracking to when I seen that, that, that Bigfoot thing, the wood the, – usually it was pretty loud out there at night with, with the crickets and everything. It was silent that night. It was silent. You talking about your first encounter at twelve years old? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. I'm sorry. I, I ramble a lot. I'm uh, I'm sorry. For that's that. okay. I bounce around too, man. No problem. But yeah, it was it was literally like I could hear my own ears ringing. That's how quiet it was that night. I mean, and it it, it, it never usually was was that quiet. We always seen lights and stuff out there too, but I, I that might have been like swamp gas or something. Let's back up on this dog thing now. You, how far away was it when y'all saw it? You may have said, but I, I'm I'm going to ask a few questions. From initially when he come out, he okay. So the way the way this road was, it it had these rather large inclines, like banks on the side of these roads, right? And it goes into the woods. Well, when he from the point he came up. And stopped in the middle of the road. I'd say we were probably about twenty yards from him. Oh, so you it wasn't it wasn't a hundred yards down. You got a good look at this thing. Yes, we we. I mean, it was probably like me standing down your hallway and looking at you. Okay, that's pretty much you know. And it, I was petrified. I didn't know if this thing was going to come and run at. I mean, we're on a golf cart. We're not going to run that fast on this thing. Maybe twenty miles an hour. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And my my dad just kept like the whole like when he seen it he's just like what is that what is that you'd have to meet my dad to understand understand him he he was a very there ain't nothing out here I'm not scared of type of man <laughs> yeah you know yeah and then and then to see him surprised was probably like a shock to you oh yeah well when I seen his the worry on him you could see the worry on his face and that's when I was like uh, oh shit. You know, like my, I ne- we never, uh, me and my brothers never seen my dad like that. Right. Never. To see him <laughs> react that way, we're like, oh, wow. Okay. There's something about being with your father, you know, and y'all are probably out hunting and doing things all the time when he's off work. And, yes, uh, sir. And he's always calm and he's your rock. You know, everything depends on your dad. And then when you see your dad get shook up or nervous or even afraid, it flies all over a little kid. And I don't care how old you are. If you're 17 years old and still at home, it still bothers you. I never saw my dad do it. But if I had seen him get afraid of something, because he was, my dad was like your dad. He's People who believed in this stuff were just stupid. He would just laugh at them and stuff like that. Like but they're crazy or whatever. That's right. And so if he had gotten scared, it, it would have just, I would have come unglued and been real worried. And I think most and, of the men listening will know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, And, and you know, like like when he told me there was that certain patch of wood that always, that, that certain patch of wood where the deer stand was, there was a right of way going between that patch of woods and the other half. And my dad used to hunt that all the time. And he said, he said, every time he walked down there, he was getting nervous and feel like something was watching him. So listen to my dad talk about being nervous out in the woods. I'm like, dad, you're, this is scaring the hell out of me. You yeah. need to quit talking about it. Yeah, I was going to say, you just want to say, dad, shut up. Don't, don't talk anymore. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So y'all were uh, t- 15 or 20 yards away from this dog where it's feet and his extremities. I know it was hairless. His feet and extremities, tail and head and ears and everything just proportion normally. His ears kind of look like maybe like a Doberman. They were kind of pointy. His legs were pretty long, like a wolf leg, maybe like a timber wolf leg. You know, how wolves have really long legs. It pretty much looked like a bald wolf with Doberman ears. 
and it it was kind of muscular too. Now that I think of it, it was it was it actually built like a pit bull, but way bigger. Okay. If that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. So did y'all have you uh, in the years since? Have you come down to what you think it was, or are you still confused on it? Because I would be. Well, my dad, as strange as this seems, he just come out one day. Well, like I went over to visit with him, and he come out one day, and he's like. Remember that thing we seen walking across the road? I was like, yeah, I remember. It's like, I think that was a chupacabra. I'm like, Dad, you know how ridiculous that sounds with you telling me this right now? <laughs> but isn't it kind of comforting to hear him be, know that he's thinking about it? Yeah, it, it, it makes me feel like less of a, a nutcase, if right. that makes any sense. And I'm gonna, now I'm going to get to the part about my brother sharing the information he gained. Because, like I said, my brother lives up near Texarkana. These things are all over his land. They yell at him, and, and he actually got to see one, and he called me. He said, hey, man, I know you're not crazy no more. My brother started learning about all this and everything and, and studying it and watching uh, Bigfoot Outlaws and all that. He called me, and he's like, man, you want to hear something? He, he wanted me to tell him the story about mine, and I told him, and he's like, I'm not going to. He said, I'm going to be honest with you. The first time Dad told me you've seen a big giant ape thing out in the oil field i thought you were crazy i was like yeah everybody did and he said now i understand he said we grew up around these things i'm like what and he's like yeah he, he kept telling me this information like uh how we would just hear random knocking in the woods and and how i seen those stick figure things and and all this and he's like man to think that we hunted out there not knowing what was around us the whole time i'm like yeah it's it's kind of scary. I mean, you always, every time you, day or night, if you walked in those woods right now, you would feel, you'd feel uneasy. I mean, it, it's just, I don't know how to explain it. I'm getting nervous even talking about it because I don't even want to feel that feeling. Like I won't, I will not go in them woods without, without at least a 20 gauge shotgun. I, I hear that all the time about those East Texas swamps and lowlands and wetlands. I, I hear it all the time. Especially, I mean, if something would get a hold of you, and see, we got panthers in those, and we've seen panthers, a big black panthers out there, and people have not believed this. And my dad had seen one of those too while we were together, and he's like, "Look at that thing!" And you know, that thing, them things are big. You know, them a panther is humongous. People don't understand that. There's, it's just to 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 have a feeling that you know that no one could get to you if something happened out there. I mean, no no one would even hear you. Yeah, I mean, they could take you and probably totally dispose of you in short order. It would just be a mystery forever. They might do a podcast on you, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it'd be like the missing 411 file. Like, I just disappeared. Yeah. No trace, you know? Right. And and that was all, that was really what, what was always in the back of my mind. Uh, going back to how you said I dealt with it, that was that's really what was in my mind a lot. Going in them woods, I'm like, you know, if I hollered right now, would my dad hear me? Kind of trying to re reassure yourself that if I need to get out of these woods in a hurry, I can get out of them and be safe. If that makes any sense. You know, I've thought about, and I've even got stories where people shoot them. Like they'll walk up on them and they'll shoot them. They always take one shot. Now, most people, deer hunter carrying a bolt rifle. And, you know, you just can get one shot off at a time and they're... Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's a great system for shooting. The bolt rifle's the most... It's I love it. That's what I shoot with. Yeah, that's what... My, my 6.5 is a bolt action 6.5. But I think I would start racking shells and I would not quit hitting this thing until I was plumb out. I don't think I'm going to take one shot, lower the rifle, see what kind of damage it did with, with one of these things. I, I'm unloading everything I got right there. As long as I have brass to feed that gun, I'm going to put brass in it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it, it, my dad even asked me that question. He's like, why didn't you just shoot it in the head? I'm like, dad, and, and this was recently we were talking about it because my brother had come down. We were all talking about the oil field, you know, and it's just a very eerie place out there, especially at night. You know, my dad just come out, just kind of out of the blue was like, son, why didn't you? why didn't you shoot that, that thing you seen that night? And I told him, I was like, dad, I was too scared. I was too scared. I had the gun loaded. 
it was cocked and ready. I mean, I was ready to ready to shoot, but I couldn't. I just could not move. The only time I could move is when that thing turned away from me, and I was able to finally break out of that trance, you know. But while that's while me and this thing was having a stare down, there was no moving. Like you and you have people also, you know. If you if you go if you take a shot at it, yeah, I understand. Continue to shoot at this thing, but I just froze. I didn't know. I had a break barrel four ten. There was no way I could have shot him. And reloaded, and then shot him again. And you were twelve years old. Oh yeah, I mean he would have come over there and ripped my head off. That's just what would have happened. But I'm saying a twelve year old doesn't have the wits about him. I don't. I don't care where you're. If you're raised in the city, country, it doesn't matter. Twelve year olds not mature enough to know w- what to do. He's he's just going to react. And that that's you know me thinking about it now. You know I'm tw- I'm 23 now. Right now, I would have not have ran around the other side of the woods after it. I'd have been getting the hell out of Dodge, if you know what I mean. Like, I mean, and I know I heard a lot, you know, you're not supposed to run from them and all this, but honestly, I'd probably run from one if I seen it again. Yeah. That thing was humongous. I mean, I've never seen something that wide across the shoulders. That thing, that thing was scary big. It hasn't stopped me from hunting or not, you know, like, you know, how I know how some people, you know, that it actually mentally scars them because they seen one. It did burn an image into my head, but I mean, I'm not scared to go hunting or nothing, you know, you know, I don't think that thing felt threatened by me at all because I mean, I was a tiny little kid. He's probably looking at me like, eh, if this dude shoots me, I'm going to go over there and rip him in half. It'll be all right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Has your brother, you, you talk, you and your brother talk about these things. Has he had an encounter of any kind that you could relay? Yeah, actually, recently, like very, like within the last three weeks, uh, like I was saying, how he seen one. This recently happened, and up there where he lives is uh is Bigfoot territory. I mean, they're they're all over where he lives. I can't think of the exact name where where he is right now. But he went out to these woods and he was doing whoops. You know, you know. I, I don't know if you ever heard, you know, people going out and doing that whoop stuff where they're like whoop and try to get the the sound back or whatever. Oh yeah. Well, he was out there and he went he he went into the woods and he was doing whoops and stuff. And he said he he caught something out of the right peripheral out of the corner of his eye and he looked real quick and he said he'd seen one duck off behind a tree. And I asked him, I said, well, what color was it? He said it was like a rust color. I wondered why his was rusty colored and mine's black. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't understand. Well, we did research on it and turns out there's different colors and, you know, like an old one would have gray hair. And I know I sound like a rambling idiot, but it, it's, I don't know how else to explain this kind of stuff. Man, are you kidding me? You, you don't sound like an idiot. Every I, everybody's listening to this is is glued to the to the video. I promise you this because this is firsthand knowledge. It's not, you know, it's yours is less than twelve years old, and your brother's is were very recent. But did anything happen after he saw this thing jump behind a tree? Did he? I mean, was it just gone? Or he said, he said it was just like it 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 went behind the tree and vanished. It was like it just like disappeared behind a tree. And I, I'm not saying like some, some people think uh, Bigfoots can travel through portals or some, some kind of mess. I don't know about all that. Like I said, I'd have to see something like that to believe it. But I, I think that they, they're so endowed with, with, with the, the way nature works that they can just kind of sleight of hand you, you know what I'm saying? Like they can get away with you not knowing they're getting away with yeah, I think there are animals that have above average intelligence and they've learned and taught, you know, through the centuries, they've learned to, to avoid humans and they, Oh yeah, definitely. They've mastered the skills. And like I said uh, earlier, you know, in that little patch of woods you were hunting, I can't tell you the times I've hunted little patches of woods like that. And there'll be a deer in there and you see them jump up and move and they're gone. They're just gone. They're gone. But what they've done is they, I think animals, they instinctively know a little bit about line of sight. They're going to run to the opposite side away from you. And if they hit that field running full speed and there's nothing prettier than seeing a deer run across the field flat out, 
I mean, just afterburners roaring. But that's what they're doing, and they're on the other side. Well, you can't get over there quick enough to even see them. And if you do, they're, they're 250, 300 yards away. So I think animals, you know, like a squirrel. I mean, you walk into the woods. Squirrels know to go to the back side of the tree. That's where they go every time. They're going to get, and you can move around that tree, and they, they'll just keep, they'll see you. You know, you'll see them, and they'll just keep moving. You can hear them scratching that bark, moving around. So I think animals just do that. Well, the, the Sasquatch apparently have mastered that to no end and they may be going up and they may be going straight up and we're we're looking at level with our eyes and so what do you think well, about yeah, that's that that's all we know you know like we're like we're like looking on the ground and you know looking out through the woods like where is this thing never think to look up do you you know like it's it's not that's not in your head when you're doing that because you seen this thing walking around you're like, oh, well, this thing couldn't just jump 40 <laughs> foot up into the tree, you know? <laughs> like That's right. That's right. And you don't hear them go up the tree. And they, I think they, you know, it, it's possible they could learn to go real quiet, you know, if they're not, and, especially if they're on a big hardwood tree like an oak or something, that that bark is not going to make much sound like it would a pine oh, tree. No. So, <clears throat> yeah, that old pine tree sound like leaves falling, something knock off some of that bark. Back to your brother, this thing just vanished and that was it, right? Yeah, and then and then like before before this had happened, he had he had a, a few encounters with them making noises at him. One of them was actually he heard something rustling around. He 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 passes a church over there in near uh near Longview. It's actually near Longview. He passes a church over there, and he lives in the gym. Well, one night he heard some noises or something out back because because the gym he lives in is literally in the dang there in the woods. I mean, it's it's literally the back side of the gym is almost into the woods, and he has a kid and a wife. So I mean, I can understand him being protective, going out there seeing what's making some noise. You know, I understand that. Well, this is before he learned the noises. I mean, this was after he learned the noises they make, like the whoops and everything. Well, he he told my my sister in law. He's like, well, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to I'm going to do a whoop, see if anything. You know, just just to see if anything will. Uh, make a noise back at me. And as, he said, as soon as he did that whoop, something screamed at him. He said it was so loud he could feel it in his chest. He's like, okay, I'm going back in. Uh, I'm going back in, locking the doors, not dealing with this. I'm done. Yeah, he is He is covered up with them. I've never done that here. I'm afraid to do it. I'm afraid to knock on trees. I'm afraid to make any kind of silly calls. They would sound well, silly my, coming from me. Me and my brother... To this day, we still want to go back to that oil field just to see, you know, just to just to go out there and maybe do a whoop or maybe a wood knock or something. And it was it wasn't uncommon to walk in there and sound like a giant woodpecker slapping against a tree. I mean, it was all the time out there. It's like me and my brother got to talking and we were like, man, we, we grew up around these things. They were all out in there. You know, I don't know if they're still there because that, that was a good little while back, but. You know, we've had hurricanes and everything. I don't know how they react to, to inclement weather like that, but we get hurricanes and everything down here, so I don't know if they moved away or whatever. I think these things have been here for centuries and probably probably uh, post-Pleistocene, you know, the Ice Age extinction. Oh, definitely. They probably yep. made it through that, and they probably get run out during hurricanes or they know where to go. I don't know. I just think it's a creature that is so uh, has evolved so well in its environment that it can actually it can actually do some of these things to make you think it's cloaking and make you think that it's <laughs> vanishing that into it thin can, air. So yeah, pretty much. Um, because our minds don't, we can't organize that. I mean, I've said it before. You know, tangible biological creatures cannot just vanish. There's there's no, matter it, there, and you can't fathom what is going on when something like that like i to this day i still can't fathom that i've seen one of them things i still think about it quite a bit and I, everything runs through my head like man what if that thing would have come out of there and just grabbed me i couldn't fight that thing i mean that thing was probably six seven hundred pounds maybe maybe even more it's like a it's going back to what i said earlier it's the fear of the unknown you can't fathom what this thing's doing because you don't you don't know what it's doing really Another weird thing was usually when I went out in the woods, I always had dogs with me. 
if I would hear a wood knock, my dogs would just disappear. I would not. I, I guess they run back to the house or something. But you know, and and my old dog, he he wasn't scared of nothing. I mean, that thing would get out in the marsh and fight nutra rats and coons and everything else and kill them and everything. But if that dog heard a wood knock, it was gone. That dog would disappear. Yeah, they know. They know something we don't know. Okay, so there's your first encounter. There's a deer stand just ripped to shreds. Your dad and you ran into a dog, and now your brother is digging deep, and and y'all are y'all are y'all are starting to learn about these things. So coming forward from that, I mean, he had an encounter three weeks ago. Is anything going on right now that's got you interested? Are you going to dig deep into this research thing and start looking for him? Well. I, I mean, I have, I have been, been researching quite a bit, uh, especially recently, you know, I, now that it's come out and my brother, you know, I really just kind of wanted confirmation that somebody, for somebody to believe me that this, that's what I've seen growing up in my family. They never were big for that sort of thing, especially my dad. I mean, my dad was a hardcore man. He just was like, there ain't nothing out there. I can't put a bullet in, you know, <laughs> like it, it and it, it felt good to finally know that somebody understood what I've seen. And it's just, it's kind of like confirmation, you know. I mean, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind going to look for them, but I, I've been doing a lot of research, and I, I'm not positive if I want to go and just see one again. I don't know if I'm ready for that yet. Because the, the, I've never felt, that was primal fear that I felt that night. And I, I don't want to, I don't know how I'd react now. I might react a little different now, but I mean, still, Something that big, it's just, I don't know. I don't know really how to explain it to you without you, like, seeing it <clears throat> for yourself. You know, I wish I could show people somehow how it how it looks, but the best I could do is probably draw a picture of it or something, but I, I'm not a great artist or nothing like that. Yeah, I would draw, like, a stick blob or something. It would, mm-hmm. be, it would look like a cartoon or, or like mm-hmm. a third grader did it. Well, uh. I think you've explained it really well. And I think there, you know, there's no way any of us can know who've not had an experience, what that's like, or what they look like, unless we've been there. However, there's good people like you stepping forward and doing your best to describe it. And you're very believable. You seem sincere about all of it. I I know this thing didn't, didn't, you know, get aggressive with you or anything, but do you think based on what you've learned and what you've seen, that if they did get aggressive, it could get pretty nasty. Oh, I, I firmly believe uh, that if I like, like I said, if I would have racked a, a four ten round in this thing, he probably would have come ripped me apart. The research I've done, I've, I've researched, you know, quite a bit and read a lot of things, and not from none of that, like whatever that TV show was called or whatever. Uh, man, what is the name of that TV show? Well, they they hunt Bigfoot or something. I don't remember. Finding Bigfoot. Uh, yeah, no, that's a bunch of bull crap. I, I'm not trying to diss anybody or nothing, but that's my opinion. I think these things, from based on the knowledge I've acquired from from studying about them, they they are very territorial. They won't get aggressive unless you provoke them first. I'm, I, I I think I've read a lot of things where they'll they'll lead somebody out of the woods by the noises they make or something. And, you know, they're just trying to get you away from their home. And I understand that. Going back to what you said, do you think it, it, they can get aggressive or it, it could get, what did you say? It could get nasty if they get aggressive? Yes. Yeah, I mean, the reason I ask that is because there's a lot of people, especially on, on the West Coast, who, and I have a lot of commenters will tell me that they, or, or they'll allude to the fact that these things are gentle creatures and they, you know... You know all that, and 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 there well, are so many theories, and there's reasons there are so many theories. But for some, maybe it's these Sasquatch out here in the east. Maybe it's you know local. Some of the encounters that I've actually heard firsthand uh, of these things around here in this Delta area where I live, they're not real nice. They're not you know they herd people. They don't they don't like attack like a lion would, for example. But they're thinking, they're thinking it through and they're making people do things that, you know, they'll push them or they'll corner them or, and of course, you know, there's half the audience that'll say, well, hell, if they want to kill you, they'd have killed you or, or whatever. And that may be true, but we don't really know what they're doing. 
I, I don't think we know what they're doing. Well, and, it, I did read something that I, I, I have to look it up. I might send it to you. Um, and it was about the, the Texas Bigfoot, so like especially down here towards where I live. They've been prone to be pretty aggressive. Now, I mean, the one like the one I ran up on, he could have been young. You know, a younger squatcher. Well, I mean, I don't know how they their childhood or growing up works, but I don't think he wanted to hurt me. I think if he, I think if he wanted to, he probably would have because I'm there. I was twelve years old. There's nothing I could have done about it. You know, I have this little bitty shotgun. I'm not going to hurt him too bad with it. They, they've been known to be aggressive down here, especially in Louisiana. So I guess you know, I don't know. I've never seen one over there. Since had any experience over there, but. They're said to be pretty aggressive, and they're dark-colored, which made perfect sense when I read that. Almost all the encounters that you'll hear in the eastern part of the United States, especially in the wetlands, wherever it's wherever water stands, these things scare people to death to where there's other times where you'll hear, hear encounters and they don't seem so menacing. Anyway, I just think it's around, you know, we go round and round talking about these things and there are so many theories and, but it's so good to hear somebody who's actually seen one and who has formed opinions based on several accounts. I really appreciate it. We're coming up on an hour. Do you have, it went by pretty quick, didn't it? Yeah, I did that. It feels like I've been sitting outside for about 20 minutes. I, don't. <laughs> <laughs> I know I know you got to get to work. Uh Don works nights. He's a working man. He's he he's a hustler. So, he's oh, yeah. he's got to get to work and but I want to ask you, do you have any parting thoughts with uh people who are going to hear this, Don? If anybody sees one, don't run. I heard they don't like that. It's just good to be able to talk about it and people believe me. I mean, if that makes sense. Just be careful out in the woods. I mean, that's the best advice I can give you. You never know what's lurking out there. But you still go, and so it's like it's oh, not yeah. it's not run you out. And I always tell people, you know, there's so many wonderful things in the wild places that you can enjoy. And the accounts of these things, you know, killing people or taking people, we don't know if these four one one cases are Bigfoot. I think people suspect they are. It's like this. I'm I'm this type of person. If that thing if that thing's gonna come after me. Like, let's say I went out to the deer lease and started hunting, you know, right now, or hog hunting or whatever I was doing. And he comes up, you know, if he's trying to hurt me, I, he's going to know I was there before he gets me. But if it's my time, it's my time. But he's going to know I was there. I, I can just tell you that. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, I had some people. Uh, we've been trying to plan a trout fishing trip out west catch some of those big steelhead and it's in bear country and that makes me really nervous black bears i think black bears would make me just about as nervous and i've run up on a couple and man it's not a good feeling because you don't know what that animal's going to do but going into grizzly country (laughs) knowing they eat fish and i'm going to be standing out in the stream you know flipping a a fly up and down (laughs) that stream it's just it bothers me so there are dangerous places in the in the in the wilderness, and but you know it's uh you're just not going to have any fun and if you're interested in that thing if you don't get out there. Oh yeah, and and you know like I said, I'm I'm not fearful of many things out in the woods, but if I would seen one now, you know, and I said I'd probably run because I would probably have no choice. I would just run, you know, or that thing might not try to hurt me, but I would hurt myself trying to get away from that thing, you know. And it, it's hard to say just stand there and look at it, but I don't know. I'd probably run from it now. Something tells me you would handle it just right. I, I think you, you're 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 woodsy enough, and you've had a, you've experienced this thing once, and I think you would I think you would read the situation and do it right. I wouldn't second guess myself. So, hey, listen, I've really enjoyed talking to you, and I I appreciate you spending time on a work day before you go to work to talk to everybody because. I'm telling you, everybody will really appreciate and enjoy your encounter. I want to tell you, thank you. You're a great guy, Don. I appreciate you. Yes, sir. No problem. Uh, Thanks for listening to the video. Uh, Great guest. The interviews are going to be coming uh, more frequently. I've got time to do them now. And if you would like to share your encounter personally in a recorded interview, just send me an email and put interview in the subject matter so it kind of sticks out at me. 
and I'll get back with you and we'll talk about it and set up a time like Don and I have. I, I actually got his email. I think it was dated. It was old. It's like four, four or five months old. And I just got yeah, in touch it, with him. It was, uh, it was a couple, I think it was a couple months ago. I, I'm not positive though. And I run across these and I go, Oh, this guy's willing to talk. So I'll, I'll get in touch with him. And I have a lot of emails in my inbox, but anyway, if you're interested in an interview, put interview in the subject matter and I'll get back with you. But otherwise, thank you for watching the video and I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks. Mm -hmm.